Hey everyone, welcome to Studio Jillian. This week, I'm going to show you how to draw Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. First, we're going to start with his head. We're going to draw an oval shape, and then we're going to create our guidelines. So once we have our football-shaped head and our guidelines down, we can start to look at what features we're going to add. So I have this reference here of which toothless I'm going to look at, and it's the one from the first movie. Um, I think he looks the same in all the movies, but I'm going to use the one from the first movie. And I'm going to look at how the back of his head is longer and slimmer than at the front. And we're going to look at how many antennas, ear flaps, or horns that he has. They look like they're ears, but they might be antennas. I don't know. He's a dragon. I don't know what they are. So Toothless has the two big antenna flaps on top of his head and two in the middle of those. So he's got four on the top and then he has two on each side of his face. Now, for his eyes, they are huge, and they often resemble cat eyes. I think they tried to make his character quite cat-like, even though he's a dragon. And for the nose, we got little slits right in the middle, but I'm going to draw the top because sometimes he scrunches it. I'm going to finish the eye now that I have the position of the nose. As you can see in our reference, they go just about where the nostril starts. And I'm gonna give him some big ol' round pupils. I have him kind of looking like down a little bit so you don't see his chin or his mouth quite yet. I erased my guidelines and outlined him in pencil a little bit uh, just so you guys can see the finished look before I do his body. Don't forget to add those little spiky details that he has, and then you're finished. Alright, toothless body time. Let's start by figuring out where we want his body to be and what we want it to do. I started out with him standing, but realized that I think it would be more fun to try to draw him sitting. So I quickly changed my mind and used this reference. Do not be fooled, it does look like I'm copying that reference, um, but I'm actually just trying to make him stand for this first little bit. It eventually doesn't work, but I thought it'd be important to show you mistakes because we all make mistakes. You can see I'm just trying to map out his body by placing simple just sketches to try to see where his shapes will be. You can see here I'm still trying to fiddle with him standing up, but it it doesn't work in the end for me. <laughs> Okay, I finally decide that this doesn't work after a few minutes, and we're going to start to draw him sitting. So I'm kind of just restarting my guidelines and taking note of his leg shapes and his body shape. So his legs are much wider at the bottom than they are at the top that give him a square foot shape because he is a dragon, so we want it to look lizard-like, or reptile-like, rather. And I start adding his um, claws pretty quickly at the end of his foot. 
they are just like little round triangles sitting at the edge of his toes toes feet feet i don't think he actually has toes i think his claws count as toes So far, we have a front half of a toothless, so I'm going to start to draw his lower half. And apparently I really had to think about how I was going to draw his legs, if I wanted them sticking out in front of him, or if I want them bent. But in the reference photo, they are usually bent up, so you can see his knee swirls. Yes, he has knee swirls. I lied. Most of the knee swirls are in the cartoon uh, drawings that I see. He doesn't have them in the movies. He is fully scaled in the movies. And I quickly add his tail, but I do not add the detail until the very end because I'm going to do the wings and his tail propellers? No, they're not propellers. What are they? They're, they're wing flaps. More, more tail wings. I'm just going to finish up by adding his other toes, or claws, at the end here, and then we're going to get to the wings. Oh, right, for his wings, we got to think of them as bat wings, because I've noticed that they also look like arms with giant fingers on them. So I'm going to make them kind of open up in the air, but also kind of closed, and I'm just going to draw the outline and then add the fingers as we go. To draw the wing or anything on the other side of your character, you want to pretend there's an imaginary line going through the part that you want it to be. In this case, it's on the other side of his face, so I'm going to imagine there's a line going straight through, and that way you know that it looks proportionate and it looks like it's on the other side instead of just sticking out of the side of his head or his face. So now I'm going to add the fingers, or I'm, I'm not sure, I think they're just like, yeah, they're probably fingers that hold the wing together. If you look at a bat, they're actually fingers. Anyways, I'm going to add those in, and then we're going to add the leather, which is what's in between and what makes up the wing instead of the feathers, because he don't have feathers, he's got leather. When I'm doing dragon wings, I like to imagine that I'm making an umbrella, because the probably waterproof. It also goes for webbed feet as well. You make the little sticks and then you add little umbrella shapes. See? Little umbrella shapes. And there you have it. You have some wings. I'm gonna go ahead and touch up the wings and make them just slightly pointier on the top instead of as round as I made them. Just to keep consistent with the movie reference that I was using. Okay, let's move down to his tail. So if you remember in the movie, he loses one of his tail rudders, rudders, wings, tail wings. I don't know what they are. If you guys know the answer, comment below. Anyways, we're going to do them just like the wings, except we're just going to add lines and then the leather in between. We're not making them round or anything. Now, don't forget to add in his little spikes that eventually do come out, spoiler alert. They come out to be huge and used to fly better. We're going to put them down his tail, and we're not going to put them on his back because we can't really see his back, so we're just going to add them along the tail. And there you go, you have a sitting toothless. Okay, we're going to try drawing him from a different angle, and 
and using our guidelines, we're going to start with an oval and adding those guidelines to place his eyes and his other facial features. So I think we're going to have him looking at us, so we're going to make our guidelines, or our X, just straight in the middle of his face oval. We will start by adding our nose, literally just three little lines right in the middle of that cross. Then we can add his eyes. I'm going to add them on top of the horizontal guideline, just like so. And those are just the top of the eyes. and. For some reason, I'm going to go ahead and make his antennas before I finish the eyes. Oh, yes, because the bottom of the eyes goes just underneath the guideline where his bottom antennas flaps. So remember, he has four antennas on the top of his head and two on each side of his face. I'm calling them antennas. I don't know what they are. Comment below if you know what they are, because I do not. Okay, and now I am eventually finishing the bottom of the eye without adding the side flaps for some reason. So we're going to continue with the eye, I guess. So Toothless's eyes are completely green and you only see the pupil. So you can make them big and round like this, or sometimes they are just a straight line in the middle. I'm going to do both because I forget that he has giant green eyes and pretend that I am making pupils and irises, but you get to see the best of both worlds in this case. You can see how to make them big and round, except in the movies they make them square for some reason, but in most of the drawings I see they're round, and you get to see them straight line like a cat's eye. In this one we can see his mouth a little bit because he's looking at us, so I make a little line of where his mouth will be. Once I have erased all the guidelines, you can see just how his face is when it looks straight at us. And now I'm going to show you what he looks like from the side. So he's got a very flat head, so I'm going to make a kind of flat oval. It's, it's not egg shaped, it's just sort of flat. I'm going to add his nose a little bit. It kind of sticks out a bit more. It's not quite round, so I'm going to add the nose. I didn't use any guidelines for this one because it's quite tricky to use on such a small head. Uh, you can try to put them in, but for the most part, the eyes are mostly in line with the nostril. And we're going to add the spikes on top of his head, not spikes, antenna, ear flaps, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to put them right on top of his head. And remember, because he's sideways, we can't see them both equally we can only see the one that's closest to us. So we're just going to slip the one that's on the other side just behind the first one. Then I'm going to add his mouth and draw the bottom part of his chin. So go down a little bit further than the circle on the back of his chin where his jawline is. Make it kind of square. And then we're going to add his eye and we're going to make sure that the pupil is facing forward this time because uh, he's not going to be looking at us from the side. That's going to look a little weird. And I'm just going to add his neck. Just make it big and muscly. And don't forget to add his spikes along his neck because we can see those now. And now I'm going to attempt to draw him without a reference and just use the guidelines and methods I've shown you.